For years, the rallying cry of the LGBT movement has been, we just want to live our lives. We're not predators, we're normal people, love is love. And yet, after the 2015 Supreme Court decision to legalize gay marriage, the focus of many LGBT organizations shifted to center around gender. I distinctly remember my father, a moderate-leaning conservative at the time, complaining that it will begin a slippery slope to bestiality, pedophilia, and other forms of debauchery. While I do not believe that homosexual behavior is deviant or at all linked to these behaviors, I do believe that many have jumped into the bandwagon that has been pressured to accept all, no matter how much damage they may do to the rest of the community. This is especially true for the trans community. While I have no doubt that many are merely dysphoric individuals looking for a cure to their bodily discomfort and unhappiness, the community at large has allowed predators to not only infiltrate, but lead, causing the direction of the movement, including its aims and goals, to center around the sexual satisfaction and deviancy of a few. In a recent investigation by Redux, WPATH, the World Professional Association for Transgender Health, has been found to be collaborating with participants of a fetish forum that hosts and produces fictional child pornography and extreme sadomasochistic content. While one might be forgiven for not noticing the sexual aspect of goals such as allowing trans women to give birth or lactate, a recently released draft providing guidelines for eunuch as a protected identity reveals that it's a lot deeper than you would expect. Eunuchs, or non-men as they could be known, first appeared in the royal courts of ancient pre-imperial Chinese states where they were employed as servants in the inner chambers of the palace. They were more or less slaves and were usually acquired as children from border territories, especially those to the south. They were castrated and brought to serve the royal household and had no real means of changing the direction of their lives. Eunuchs were regarded as the most trustworthy of servants because they could neither seduce women of the household or father children that might form a dynasty to rival those of the sitting emperors. The document reads as follows. For the purposes of the standards of care, we define eunuch as an individual assigned male at birth whose testicles have been surgically removed or rendered non-functional and who identifies as a eunuch. Eunuch individuals may have other identities as well. Most live as men, and some may else identify as transgender or non-binary, but the identity of a eunuch is a gender identity of its own, and for many it is the sole identity with no other gender or transgender affiliation. Our identity-based definition for those who embrace the term eunuch does not include others, such as men who would have been treated for advanced prostate cancer. We focus here on those who are eunuch-identified, individuals who feel that their true self is best expressed by the term eunuch. Eunuch identified individuals desire to have their testicles surgically removed or rendered non-functional. Healthcare providers will see eunuch identified individuals requesting medical care. They ask for castration to become the eunuchs because they're eunuch identified. They may also benefit from eunuch community because of identification with or without actual castration. The document also states that eunuch identifying people may share with other gender diverse people a desire for reduction or elimination of masculine physical features, masculine genitals, or genital functioning, and claims that they may suffer from the same minority stress as other groups. Because wanting to have your balls cut off is definitely the same kind of stress and stigmatization that disabled people or homosexual people face. The claims that there are no recognized public presentation for eunuchs is misguided at best and willfully ignorant and racist at worst. Eunuchs were a class of slaves who were raised to be treated as something lesser than men, but still better than women as a fact of their sex. They were purposefully crippled, and I find it revealing that no one is attempting to make a new identity out of FGM victims. No women identify as FGM or wish for it to happen to themselves because it is still firmly grounded in our modern day reality. It is a threat, one that we can all empathize with, because we know that it could happen to us against our will. The practice of creating eunuchs has been eradicated and is precisely because it is not a forced continuing practice that men sexualize it. If this wasn't enough, much of the research it references was collected by a hardcore fetish site called the Eunuch Archives, a site that features child sexual exploitation fantasies centered around stopping little boys from going through puberty. The Eunuch Archive began in the late 1990s in collaboration with Body Modification Ezyme, and was initially hosted on the same site. BME achieved notoriety in the early 2000s for a viral video called Pain Olympics, which featured men mutilating their genitals on camera. Before the archive became its own separate entity, members met on a Usenet forum by the same name and was advertised in Alt Sex Bondage, a sadomasochistic discussion group. Most notably, these Usenet forums are where the acronym BDSM was originally coined in 1991 and was a target of the FBI's first investigations into internet-based pedophile rings, as it offered a space for organizing and exchanging child sexual abuse materials. In Alt Unux Questions, 
Members shared castration fantasies, offered services, traded castration photos and videos, sought to connect with women to feminize, and asked for advice on chemical castration, and recommended doctors willing to perform surgeries without psychiatric evaluations. An FAQ document published at the beginning of the site's development recommended several other torture and bondage pornography forums for users to share images and request cutters. Upon the establishment of the Unink Archive, most users transferred over, including a site administrator who used the moniker Jesus, who has since been identified as Thomas W. Johnson, a retired professor at California State University in Chico. Jesus made posts to the forum in March and April, where he let his identity slip when he invited site members to partake in an academic survey on childhood experiences, castration desire, and sexual history, as well as watch him give a talk at CSUC via Zoom. There is no mistaking Jesus' identity, as Johnson has even published research based on surveys he has personally conducted with other members of the archives. And his academic interests include advocating for expansion of gender identity to include men with subtle masochistic and even pedophilic castration fantasies, known as the male to eunuch identity. In 2010, Jesus posted to the forum on how WPATH authorities had come to perceive the term gender identity disorder as outdated, saying he was in attendance at a 2009 meeting in Oslo where there was consensus to implement the term gender dysphoria in the subsequent edition of the Standards of Care. The draft for the next edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders suggests gender incongruence, which I much prefer, he wrote. The body and mind are out of sync, with no mental illness implied. In 2016, Jesus claimed to have been specifically chosen to rewrite a portion of the standards of care by former WPATH president Eli Coleman, who pointed at me and announced that I was expected to provide input on UNUCs for the revision. Now is our opportunity to help devise the standards of care that will be most helpful, wrote Jesus. In 2018, Jesus announced the upcoming revisions to the guidelines and invited collaboration from members of the community. Another long-standing site contributor with connections to WPATH is Dr. Krister heidel Willett, otherwise known as Kristoff. According to his Facebook profile, he studied medical sciences at Ohio State University, and once again, one can see a pattern of men connected to sexual depravity making long-reaching decisions in the trans community. In June of 2009, Willett was invited by WPATH to speak on the development of standards of care for individuals with a male to eunuch gender identity disorder at a conference in Oslo. In May of 2010, the contents of Willett's Oslo lecture were published in the International Journal of Transgenderism, an academic journal issued by WPATH. Willett co-authored the report and referred to surveys conducted with participation of members of the UNUNC archives. Beyond his academic holding, he posted two videos to his YouTube channel wherein he wears a nun costume, addresses children wearing out a list of swears, and waves around a condom while addressing children about, about the importance of prophylactics. In addition, Willette has been in charge of many of the financial and social aspects of the forum. According to a 2019 post by Willette, the website at that time received over 20 million hits per month and was run on seven different servers, a situation that he personally was subsidizing. As a result, he made several requisitions for donations through PayPal and through a charitable educational corporation, which he set up that was eventually dissolved by the state of Minnesota for a violation of the Nonprofit Corporation Act. For the past two decades, the UNUNC Archive has hosted an annual meeting of members held in Minneapolis, Minnesota, which was co-hosted by Willette and Jesus. In response to WPATH's newly released draft standards of care in December last year, one site member professed to being absolutely delighted and said he would gladly throw millions under the bus in order to secure a future where doctors must obey and have no right to demand reasons or withhold surgery and medication which is exactly what the current transitioning guidelines are doing. Instead of seeking other solutions to dysphoria, current guidelines allow children to take medicine that will freeze them in their prepubescent bodies, preventing full brain formation, halting reproductive abilities, and funneling children into transition. It is known that the recent rise in transgender individuals is likely a form of social contagion, and that people who would otherwise later desist and identify as homosexual are now transitioning to the opposite gender in order to appear straight. At best, gender reassignment surgery is experimentation on people who want to treat their dysphoria in the only way they know how, often leading to various health problems. At worst, it is being used as a tool to achieve sexual satisfaction by those who get off on body mutilation, misogyny, and transitioning. And this is no conspiracy. Minneapolis is where WPATH's headquarters were based for years, and is the city where the former WPATH president, Eli Coleman, who served as a lead chair overseeing the most recent updates to the WPATH standards of care, currently lives and works. In 2008, a group of researchers from Canada and California collaborated on a research project on the topic of male castration fetish and found that the majority of wannabes who fantasized about castration were interested due to sexual fantasy. 
In WPATH's draft standards of care, the Unuk Archives Fiction Archive is directly acknowledged and named, though the large amount of stories within the archive that directly involve the sadistic sexual abuse of children are surprisingly left out. These stories primarily focus on the eroticization of child castration. In some, little boys request the procedures themselves and express gratitude to the adults who perform the operations. In others, children may be forcibly castrated under extreme duress. Some narratives contain violent sexualized depictions of children with stunted puberty being raped by doctors, written in sickening detail. Within the protected fiction archives, there were over 3,000 stories involving minors, including the explicit sexual abuse of children, and Minor was a specially curated tag that users could select to easily access stories specifically featuring children. The fictional pornography includes themes such as Nazi doctors castrating children, baby boys being fed milk with estrogen in order to be violently sex trafficked as adolescents, and pedophilic fantasies of children who have been castrated to halt their puberty, freezing them in a childlike state. Over 700 individuals responded to a survey shared on the eunuch archive describing the reasons for their ambition toward eunuchdom. For some, castration was a very important first step towards an MTF transition, the study's authors noted. As MTF transsexuals, they sought to rid their bodies of unwanted testosterone with or without supplemental estrogen to further their transition. One respondent wrote of his desire for becoming it, a submissive guy without sex drive. More common was a slave metaphor. As a slave, it would allow a greater focus on serving the pleasure of the master. The trans community needs to be better at safeguarding their organizations and influential speakers, as just about every time you look beneath the surface, you'll find that sexual abusers and deviants are rife within their ranks. One major red flag, even if you do firmly believe in the rhetoric that gender reassignment actually works, is the way that these individuals approach the effects of their actions. They are aware that, just as demisexual, non-binary, and all the other identities have slowly but surely moved from the realm of jokes into the mainstream, so too will the concept of eunuchs, if ratified as a recognized gender. So many detransitioners have stepped forward to speak about how they regretted their actions, how transitioning had been pushed upon them by doctors, psychi by doctors, psychiatrists, and other professionals, and let their underlying conditions go unnoticed. But I do wonder if the trans movement is even possible to clean up as the theme of grooming runs strong within it. Even the root academics that helped to create the platform the trans rights movement is built on, Kinsey and Money among others, facilitated child sexual abuse. So it really should be no surprise at all that those who are creating these new guidelines also have their fingers in some very dirty pots. This, dear viewers, is where we part. Um, I was working on another video about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. That's going to be a long one, like so long, and I, I don't so it's going to take me hours to edit. So for now, you get this one. If you have any comments, concerns, questions, let me know in the comments down below. I hate learning new news. I hate learning new things, especially about these topics, because every time you think that you know how depraved people are, you get surprised again. Like, I don't know how you could possibly, possibly just have your eyes shut firmly against all the depravity that the trans community is involved with. And the thing is, it's not even like every individual. I'd say that most people are not weird and crazy like this but they let the weird and crazy ones headline and lead the movements and then that retort trickles down to the masses and they end up repeating the stuff without even knowing where it came from it's honestly just frustrating it is frustrating but i'm sure you already know that all right well i'll see you guys next time bye